While Gold and Sam strolled in New York, Adolf Hitler was on the move in Europe. German, for German forces captured Norway and Denmark in April 1940, then turned against France, the Netherlands, and Belgium, forcing all three to surrender within a month. German bombs pounded British cities night after night. Great Britain took a stood alone in the war against Hitler. The United States rushed weapons to the British, but stayed out of the fighting. Gold continued bringing Sam documents from his company files, but both knew the stuff was of little value. And in early 1941, Gold got some welcome news from Sam. They had decided to drop me entirely. Gold was relieved to have his life back. He even began dreaming of starting a family of his own. It was too good to be true. Stalin may have intended to break his treaty with Hitler, but Hitler beat Stalin to the punch. In June 1941, the German dictator launched a four million man invasion force across the Soviet border. The German Blitzkrieg drove deep into Soviet territory, capturing millions of soldiers and quickly approaching the Soviet capital of Moscow. Sam called Gold. The Soviets wanted him back. It was not a request. The Soviets had spies inside various factories, Americans who were willing to secretly share information with the Russians in exchange for cash. Gold's new job was to act as a courier. He began taking long bus rides across New York State, picking up files in Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo. He was sent to Tennessee to get a sample of a new kind of explosive. He brought everything back to New York City and delivered it to Sam. Sam's real name was Semyon Semyonov, a 30-year-old 30, a 30 engineer with a degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Semyonov worked for a Soviet trading company based in New York, but that was just a cover for his real work. Semyonov was a secret agent for the Soviet intelligence agency, the KGB. After picking up materials from gold, Sam would head for the Soviet cons consulate a three-story building in Manhattan. He climbed past the first two floors where Soviet clerks did normal consulate work, like helping Soviet citizens get travel visas. Then, making sure no one was in the hall, he would take out a key, unlock a door on the third floor, and enter the secret New York City headquarters of the KGB. It was a large open room with desks and metal shutters in the windows and a portrait of the Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin gazing down. Semyonov handed his documents to another agent and quickly left the building. The stolen information was translated into secret code and sent by telegram to KGB headquarters in Moscow. <laughs>